uh, in this video we're going to tie my signature fly, the uh, Krebs Popper. Um, we're going to use the 7 16 um, Start out with, we want to go over the materials. We're using a Mustad Signature C70SD 2 aught stainless steel hook. For the tail, we're going to use Targus Fox Fur. Okay. Comes in a white patch. What I do is I take the patch and I cut it up into, I just lay my ruler on it and cut it into about one inch squares. And I put those in a Ziploc bag and I pull them out and they're ready to use. This is Polar Flash. You can use any kind of flash you like. Um, I like this Polar Flash particularly because it comes, uh, it kind of comes apart and makes a little more flashy. Uh, but use any type of flash that you'd like. And then for the collar, we're going to use uh, these large 7 inch Schloppen feathers. Two of those. Okay. Um, for the legs, we're using a medium round rubber. I cut my strands in uh, about 4 inch lengths and then we'll just peel off two of those when we get ready to install the legs. Now we have a white 7 16 rod and the 7 16 jig. I'm going to insert the jig right back to the slot. Put your finger on it, hold it. Take your leg needle, insert it right through the hole, and pin that in place. Now it can't move. Take your razor, hold the razor so you got the full length of the blade out. Hold the jig with your thumb and your forefinger. Rest your finger on this back piece, don't push, and slice that off. Okay. Flip the jig over. Start to cut down the face here. Make sure you got a, a sharp razor blade. Cut that off. Touch the end with your finger. Now turn it over. Push your needle out. Put it back on your magnet. Now we have a perfectly shaped head. Now take your razor blade again. And like before in the other one, um, I have my students put a mark here on the, on the top of this radius to cut it with. I'm not going to do that because I've done enough of these. but. Uh, um, I'm just going to make a slice here in the back, right up the center. I'm going to check it to see if it's set in square, and it is. And I'm going to push that blade right to the middle of the head. There. Turn it around and push that right up to the fast back, but don't cut through it. Remove the razor, and that head's ready to install. Here. Okay, we've got our two out hook in the vise. I'm using a UTC 140 thread, and I like the red. Use any color you'd like. Now, um, what I do when I when I teach a class is I start out by having everybody apply the the head to the hook. Now, this head is designed to ride flush with the hook. You don't want to cram it down in there. Um, when this thing hits the water, you want the weight of the hook, the maximum weight pulling down, and the maximum floating sticking up. Okay. Now to start, we're going to apply the head right to the back of the eye, and then I'm going to have you start the thread right at the back of the head. Make a couple wraps towards the tail, and then move the wrap right back to the base of the head. And then let your bobbin hang, right there. Now take, take the head off. Cut your tag off. Now what this is doing, is this is telling you when you start adding tail and collar and flash and all that stuff forward um, I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to mark this right where that thread comes across my hook. Now as I add material forward when that thread comes across that mark I'm going to mark it here so the camera can see it. There, get it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now when I get my thread back to this point after adding the tail I gotta stop there so my head will fit. Okay, so go ahead and lay a base coat back to the bend of the hook. Back here. Alright, now take your patch of fox fur. I'm going to pull this thing up so it kind of sets square off of the patch. Just grab the whole thing and cut the, the fiber or the uh, patch off the back. Hold it by the butt ends here and then take a good look at it. And if you can look, if you can look real close here, you can see there's a bunch of different lengths of fiber in there. 
Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to grab, I want these longest fibers and these medium length fibers. I don't want all this bulk from these short fibers. So I'm just going to grab them right here, turn up this way, and then just pull those medium length ones out. Okay. Get them all kneaded out nice and clean. And that's the first piece of my tail. Now, your tail length wants to be about two times the length of the shank. You can actually take a, a measurement and mark it back here on your vise if you'd like. But it's right there. So <laughs> we'll take this piece and lay it right in there. Now one of the things I want, you, I want to do in this video is I don't just want to show you how to tie a popper. I want to help you out with some of your other tying. Little tricks that I've learned along the way here. So most people will tie that in right there and they'll cut it off. Okay. What I do is I want to tie it there. I'm going to take two or three soft loops forward to get up in front of the point. I'm going to tie it off here. Okay. When you when you build a fly that has a lot of tail material, you tend to build up a whole lot of bulk right on top of each other, and you get the inevitable hump in that fly back here. This will completely eliminate that. So tie it in, a couple small loops forward, tie it down. Now here's the secret. Bring your scissors in flat, bring all the material up, scissors in flat, drop that all the way down against your scissors, and cut it. Now we've cut a taper in that thing. A few loose, loose loops around that, tie it down, move your thread all the way back to the base of the tail. All right. I'm going to take a second patch of the fox fur. There again, straighten it up. Cut the patch off the bottom. Grab the long and the medium fibers in here, right there, and knead out all those short ones. Okay, lay this one right back on top of the original tail, right there. Now, when you tie this one down, you want to tie it down, make one or two wraps forward right next to each other, and then go back towards the bend of the hook. Okay. See how I did that? And when you see it falling over the bend, you went too far. So, you know, if you need to, take one ramp off and keep that from bending over the back. Now on this side, cut this again. Lay your scissors flat. Bring the material over flat on the scissors and cut it. Right there. Wrap that taper down. And look what we've done. We've completely eliminated that great big hump that always happens right here. Okay, by just stacking two tapers opposing each other that way. Okay. Move your thread back to the base of the tail. There. Now, one of my pet peeves is, is when you're adding flash. Uh, I'm just going to add four or five fibers here. Never cut <laughs> little pieces out of your hank of, uh, of flash. Always cut full lengths. Uh, if you cut little pieces out of here, it ruins your whole f your whole hank of flash. So I always cut full lengths, but I have a little different way of installing it. And uh, if you follow me here, if you're right-handed, hold the, the cut fibers with your right hand clear up the end. Stick your left hand between your vise and your bobbin, and pull that in between, between your vise and your bobbin here. Pull the fiber up to your bobbin, up to the thread, and over the top of the fly, and then position it where you want. Once you've got it positioned, then just pull the, the length that you want. Reach around, grab your bobbin, tighten it up. Now you want to you want to drop that. You're going to have to switch hands every time. We're just going to make several big loops forward, like that. Get that thread up in front of the point of the hook. Now come across the fly with your flash and follow it with your thread. Now you can slowly bend it down the side of the hook, right down to the back. And we have one solid piece of flash front to back. We don't have a messed up hank, and we don't have a lot of little pieces to deal with. Okay? Now, collar's made up of a schloppen feather. Mm -hmm. Now just bend the feather. When it stops bending, it'll tell you, stop pulling on it at that point. Take your scissors, and don't open it like this and cut it. Just keep them closed, stick it right up to the stem, and you want to cut it right on the top of that bend. Okay? Now what we've got in this feather is I've got all this fuzzy marabou here that's going to make up the, the back side of the collar 
And then as we Palmer this, we're going to get into these stiffer fibers. And those stiff, stiffer fibers tend to make a, a turbulence in the back of the fly, which will make the whole back end of this fly just do this. Okay, I'm going to use two of these. Okay, we're going to mate these two tips together. Now when I tie these on, I don't want to tie them on, see that thread is setting right on the base of the tail. I want you to move your thread forward about a sixteenth of an inch then come in at about a 45 degree angle to tie this on. Come in here, catch about an eighth of an inch of it, tie it down tight. Right there. I'm going to turn this over so you can see how I tied it. Right there. Now the reason you don't want to tie that on right at the base of the tail, the first wrap of your palmer will be over the end of your tail and it will cause your tail to drop down. So just move that, that first wrap forward a little bit. Okay. Now once you've got that tied, tie it off real tight. Once you got it tied down real firm, move your thread real big wraps all the way up to the eye. All I'm trying to do is just get it out of the way. Now, I have a problem right here. See the, the dissimilar sizes in the feathers? Now, if you, if you leave that there and you start to palmer that, when you come up, one of them you're going to drop. So a really easy way to overcome that is just give it a haircut. <laughs> Done. All right, now as we come up, one of them doesn't drop out. Now, palmering, what I teach, stroke these fibers down a little bit. This just takes practice. Okay, so if you don't succeed the first time, just keep doing it. Start out with two fingers. Come around the feather and just lightly rake all those fibers backwards. Okay, so see I got them just pinned back, but I'm not bending the shaft of the feather. Come around, hit the hook, and deliberately come around the point. And back up. Now hold those fibers back the whole turn. If you don't do that, when you get to the front, it'll look like rope because you're going to overlay um, you're going to overlay these fibers with this wrap. Now the second turn, use three fingers. Come on here and get all those fibers, brush them back, round the hit the hook, come up the other side. Now that little mark that we made in the beginning on the on the point of the hook, that's our target. That's when we know when to stop. So just keep palmering forward. I'm getting close. One more wrap and I think I'll be there. And we're there. Okay, now, feathers in my left hand. We made these great big wraps to move the thread up. The easiest way to do this is just unwrap it. Now when that thread comes underneath the feather, one more right there, just simply switch hands and come right across that feather and you've captured the feather. Nice and simple. Now we want to trim off the excess of the schloppen. And we're there. Nice and fuzzy, fluffy. Crank it back up a little bit. Now what, what I want to do here is I want to fold all those fibers back and then back wrap them and I want my thread to fall right across that black line just like when we marked it in the beginning. Okay, see I'm not quite there. I need to back wrap that just a couple more turns. Right there. Now, if in doubt, just take your head, stick it back on there, and see if it fits. Squeeze a little bit, stick it on there. See that? Perfect shot right there. Okay, so now, this... Uh, this head is entirely held on by glue. Okay, so what I need is I need a I need a, a base coat of thread here um, that's going to let my glue hold on to it. Uh, a substrate. I need a really good substrate for that glue to to hold on. Okay. Now to install the head on this fly, we're going to use um, super glue gel. Do not use regular super glue on this part. Um, the gel will give you about a second and a half to two seconds um, to adjust before it, before it uh, sticks real good. But, remember when we cut this head, we cut that dude almost half in two. Okay, So I want ad enough adhesive on this top to glue that head completely back together as well as hold it on the hook. So what I do is I'm going to put a great big bead right across the top of this. 
don't skimp on the adhesive here. Okay, nice big bead. And then on the sides, I'm just going to get it wet. Get a little wet there. Get a little wet on this side. All right. Now, I'm using a rotary vise, so I'm going to turn this upside down. It's easier that way. Now, to install the head, I'm going to simply stick my fingernails in the side of this thing. And I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to squeeze really hard because I want this wide open. Okay, don't don't just you know barely open it that way and try to squeeze it over the hook, or the adhesive will grab the foam and roll it in. So I want this as wide as possible, and then I'm going to stick the back end first right up against the feather and fold it up towards the eye. Okay, so squeeze it good and wide, right up against the feather, push the front end up, and when you get flush with the hook, right there. Let go. Turn it over and see if it's setting true with the fly. If it isn't, you got just a little bit of time to adjust it. Okay, we're sitting real good right there. Now, I'm going to grab this thing in the back and I'm going to roll it forward. If I've got enough adhesive on this fly, you're going to see a dollop of glue come out right through that split that we made in the hood, in, in the initial cut. So squeeze it, roll your fingers forward. And there's our little dollop of glue. Now you can use your bodkin, you can use a toothpick, but just stick it in there, wipe that off. Do not wipe this on your jeans. <laughs> we'll glue your leg hair to your leg to your pants. <laughs> uh, wipe it off the back. Clean it up. Now to clean out the eye, it almost always goes into the eye. Real simple. Stick that through the eye, put your thumb on it, rotate it, pull it out. Okay, now the head's mounted. Now we're going to go back to installing the legs. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start the needle in that original hole that we made in the jig. Okay, I'm going to drop it down horizontally. I'm going to put the one finger here and one finger here, and I'm going to push, and that needle is going to come out the back. Don't grab a hold of the needle and try to push it through. It'll find a new hole. Put a finger right here, a finger here, a thumb on the back of the needle, and push, and it'll come right out that same hole every time. Okay? You don't need to, uh, you know, some of us, some people may have a little softer thumb. You can take a little block of wood or something and put it on the back, or, or get a thimble. You know, put your thimble on your finger and push it up. Now, push it up to where the eye is sticking through this side. Take. Uh, Two of these medium round, you can use whatever you want, but this fly I use two medium round rubber legs. Stick the rubber right through the, the eye and then pull it right through the head. Okay. Pull it on through. No, don't glue this. Don't use super glue on this because the super glue will react with the rubber and, and make them go all kinds of crazy on you. A little pull and separate your legs. Now, a real good way to lengthen the legs in a fly this size, I throw this on a, anywhere from a 7 to a 9 weight. Um, actually, fish for smallmouth with a 6 weight on this, this particular fly. Um, but one of the things you want to be careful of is um, making the fly twist. Um, a real easy way of overcoming that is when you, when you cut these legs, use a ruler. So I'm going to stand up so you can see what I'm doing. Stick a ruler on this side, stick this, the legs in the scissor. I'm going to cut these at 7 eighths of an inch. And just slide your scissors up to 7 eighths, cut. Flip it over to the other side, slide them up to 7 eighths, I missed. Cut. Now I have equal legs on both sides and that's going to eliminate uh, a little more twisting. Now, for all practical purposes, this fly is ready to fish. Um, if you want eyes on this fly, uh, I normally use Tester's model paint. Uh, I'll do a red and then I'll do a black. Um, video sake, we don't have time to show that. So what I'll do, here's a, another fly that we just did. I'll take a, a round paintbrush handle, dip it in the red, dip it on and let the, the, the red eye dry and then come back later and if you look at this eye 
another little hint is don't put your pupil right in the center of the eye. Move it forward, looks a lot more realistic. Okay. And that is the basic uh, Gary Krebs popper.